I'm Kelly with Chicago Movie Tours coming to you with our 10th virtual walking tour on Chicago in film. My first virtual walking tour took place in LaGrange, Illinois, a suburb about 15 miles west of downtown Chicago. If you'll recall, we looked at two locations that were used in the 1995 Chicago-based romantic comedy While You Were Sleeping. Today, in just a moment, we'll get in the car and head back to LaGrange, Illinois for our week on parades, protests, Chicago, and cinema. This time in LaGrange, we'll explore a parade that has attracted Chicago area families and some top-notch movie stars for almost 75 years. So if you're ready, you might want to grab one or even two pets for this one. And let's go. The LaGrange Pet Parade began in 1947. Its purpose, to bring together the community as kids and pets march down the village streets. Costumes are encouraged. Wagons, tricycles, and baby buggies are allowed, as are all kinds of pets. Dogs, cats, rabbits, ducks, geese, lambs, turtles, an alligator, and at least one baby elephant. Prizes like roller skates, candy, and ice cream were doled out to the kids, and people picnicked afterwards. But over time, the LaGrange Pet Parade grew from a novelty to a tradition. And as one suburban magazine reports, it has become part of the village's identity. For a couple of decades, the parade was broadcast on Chicago's television station, WGN. Now it can be found on local access cable. This year, because of COVID-19 and our stay-at-home orders, the village's committee, along with residents, workers, and just all sorts of volunteers, put together a virtual pet parade, which you can watch right here. As the parade's legacy has grown over its 75 years, so have its costs. According to the website of the LaGrange Pet Parade, a typical parade costs about $50,000 to put on. That's in non-pandemic times, of course. Some of this money, at least in the parade's early days, went to well-known movie and TV stars. Among the celebrities included are Michael Landon from Bonanza, Annette Funicello from the Mickey Mouse Club, Lee Majors from The Six Million Dollar Man, and Susan Day and Danny Bonaduce of The Partridge Family. Naturally, animal stars also have made appearances at the LaGrange Pet Parade, Ren Tin Tin, and even one of Lassie's pups. Pet parades have been around in the United States for at least almost a century. For example, this 1929 newspaper from Indiana urges boys and girls to enter a pet parade taking place at the Indiana State Fair. Nearly every child has a pet of some kind, the organizer says. Any kind of pet is eligible. Still, the LaGrange Pet Parade just outside Chicago seems to be the catalyst for many others around the United States. An Alabama newspaper from 1956, for example, insists that other cities like Harlem in, the, in New York, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, and Stockton, California, copied the LaGrange Pet Parade for their own enjoyment and community gatherings. Since Chicago Movie Tours aims to discover Chicago through film, we are interested first in the LaGrange Pet Parade's relationship to Hollywood. Second, since the parade hosted the most movie stars in the 1950s, we will focus specifically on that decade and three of the stars in attendance. The three movie stars are Red Grange, Jack Palance, and Debbie Reynolds. Let's start with football player turned movie star, Red Grange. Join me as we head just down that way to our first stop. Behind me is Lyons Township High School, one stop on the Pet Parade route. We'll stop here for just a second to, to talk about Red Grange, the first movie star invited to the parade. Red Grange was born at the turn of the 20th century and was a star football player at Wheaton High School, just a little bit northwest of where we are now. He then played football at the University of Illinois, where he was selected as an All-American halfback each season. In 1925, Grange dropped out of college to play football with the Chicago Bears. 
Red Grange was nicknamed the Galloping Ghost for his running speed and his fast style. In short, he was one of the most famous players of the 20th century and helped popularize modern football, as the titles of these books suggest. So what does this star football player from a Chicago suburb have to do with Hollywood? Well, in 1926, Red Grange's agent thought that he could attract just as many moviegoers as he did football fans. So his agent signed him up for a screen test and to have some publicity photos made. Grange made his cinematic debut in the silent film One Minute to Play. The following year, he starred in A Racing Romeo, another silent movie about car racing. Then in 1931, Grange starred in a 12-part serial series that borrows from his football nickname, The Galloping Ghost. Based solely on Red Grange's Chicago background, it makes sense that the parade organizers would have invited him there in 1951. But as with the other two celebrities we'll consider in this virtual walking tour, we can locate another reason he may have been invited, his love of pets. In nearly all of the books I have skimmed on Red Grange, his dog Jack, his childhood dog Jack, is mentioned and praised as his sports trainer. Here's a quote. I was crazy about that dog and played with him by the hour. My favorite pastime was to back Jack in the corner of the fence and watch him dodge, fake, and squirm his way out of my grasp. He was unquestionably the greatest open field runner I ever saw, and I learned things from him I never forgot. In other interviews with Red Grange, long after his football and movie careers were over, he still kept pets at the forefront. For example, in his later years, Grange was quoted as saying he liked to sit on his patio with his two dachshunds, Rusty and Ginger, whom he called my little halfbacks. A final story goes like this. In 1978, Red Grange and his wife Margaret were invited back to Wheaton, Illinois, where he played football in high school. As the date got closer, the account tells us this. Red and Margaret faced a crisis, what to do with their two puppies. A few weeks before they were to leave for Wheaton, the Grange's puppy sitter moved to Arkansas, leaving the two without someone to take care of their young pups. Margaret decided not to attend, staying behind at home to watch their two dachshunds. Our second movie star invited to the LaGrange Pet Parade is Jack Palance whom, depending on your age, you'll either know from the 1953 Western Shane or the 1991 comedy City Slickers. Let's head to our second stop on the parade route and talk about him. Now I'm standing in front of LaGrange's Stone Avenue Station, another location on the LaGrange Pet Parade route. As an actor, Jack Palance first worked in the theater. He even replaced Marlon Brando in the Broadway production of A Streetcar Named Desire. That's where he first caught the eye of filmmaker Elia Kazan, who would direct Palance in his first movie role. Jack Palance worked for decades on TV and in movies, mostly portraying complicated tough guys. In 1991, with the film comedy City Slickers, Palance had a late career resurgence, you might say. He won an Oscar for this role, which led to one of the most memorable Academy Award moments ever, the one-armed push-ups. In 1954, when Jack Palance was invited to the LaGrange Pet Parade, he would have been quite a well-known movie star. By then, he had already been nominated for two Academy Awards for his supporting roles in Sudden Fear and Shane, the latter of which was a big box office success. It's impressive to me then that Jack Palance was invited to the LaGrange Pet Parade. Like football player turned movie star Red Grange, Jack Palance was outspoken about his love for animals. Here is his widow. He was compassionate and generous, loved art and poetry, children and animals. All of our pets died of old age. On their 1200 acre California ranch, the couple had a menagerie of dogs, cats, chickens, peacocks, rabbits, and horses. We even had a pet turkey named Emily, Palance's wife said in an interview after his death. On the ranch, the couple also had two calves who lost their mother shortly after birth. Jack Palance personally nursed the babies with handheld bottles several times a day. They are pets, he said. 
I have one more reference about Jack Palance as a movie star and animal lover, if you'll indulge me. In addition to acting, Jack Palance painted. In fact, in 2011, his artwork went to auction. Can you guess the subjects of some of his paintings now found on jackpalanceart.com? There's Fishing Turtle, He Wears the Pants, and The Dogs and the Woman. So again, while I'm unsure if the LaGrange Pet Parade hosted Jack Palance because of his film stardom and his love of animals, it's swell to know the latter exists. Our last movie star invited to the LaGrange Pet Parade in the 1950s is Debbie Reynolds, whom, depending on your age, you'll recognize from Singing in the Rain and The Unsinkable Molly Brown, or whom you'll know as the mother of Princess Leia, or a character on the TV show Will and Grace. Let's head to our last stop. I'm standing in front of LaGrange's Village Hall, the final stop on the LaGrange Pet Parade route. I will confess, I could spend quite a while talking about Debbie Reynolds. If you saw the video that precedes this one, you already know that I have an affection for, or perhaps an unhealthy obsession with, the film musical Singing in the Rain. So I'll try doubly hard to focus my thoughts here. Like Jack Palance, Debbie Reynolds had a long career on screen, on stage, and off. From 1948 to 1951, Reynolds appeared in a handful of films, but her breakout role was in 1952 with Singing in the Rain. Many film and TV appearances followed, including a starring role in the 1964 movie The Unsinkable Molly Brown, which led to a nomination for the Academy Award for Best Actress. In the late 1990s, a new generation discovered Debbie Reynolds when she played Grace Adler's mother on the sitcom Will and Grace. She also voiced characters on the children's television program Rugrats, and in 2013 she appeared as the mother of Liberace in HBO's Behind the Candelabra. Debbie Reynolds' last on-screen role came in HBO's 2016 documentary Bright Lights, in which she appears alongside her daughter Carrie Fisher, who famously played Princess Leia in the Star Wars movies. Shortly after Bright Lights aired, Reynolds and Fisher made headlines once again with their deaths that occurred only a day apart. Aside from her performance in Singing in the Rain, my favorite thing about Debbie Reynolds is how hard she fought to protect the legacy of MGM and its movie stars. When MGM auctioned off its classical Hollywood history in 1970, Reynolds bought massive amounts of Hollywood memorabilia. Dorothy's red slippers, the Maltese Falcon, Charlie Chaplin's hat, Marilyn Monroe's white subway dress. Her eventual goal was to build a museum. Fellow MGM star Leslie Caron once said, Debbie never had enough money to build a building, but she kept those costumes as long as she could. That was her dream. The last of Reynolds' collection was auctioned off in 2014. Reynolds was a part of the LaGrange Pet Parade in 1953, only a year after her breakout role in Singing in the Rain. So like Jack Palance, she would have been quite a popular movie star when she landed in Chicago and was ushered out to LaGrange. Also, like our two other subjects today, Reynolds was pretty vocal about her love of animals. You can see this in fan magazines from her earliest days in Hollywood to her death in 2016. Here she is with her poodle, Tersi, and here she is with pets in another fan magazine. In her final days, Debbie Reynolds also spoke of her love for her pets. Her son, Todd Fisher, explains, The night Carrie died, my mother was setting me up for her leaving the planet. She starts running me back through her estate, which we had done many times, and said, You're going to take my dog, and you know all these instructions. In another interview, Fisher assured fans of his sister and his mother, none of these pets will ever go without what's best for them. They all have trust funds, let's put it that way. Even Debbie Reynolds' dog Dwight was seated in the front row of her memorial service. Next time you see a movie with Red Grange, Jack Palance, or Debbie Reynolds, perhaps you'll think of their pets and a little kid's parade in the western suburbs of Chicago. I'm Kelly with Chicago Movie Tours. Thanks for joining me on this virtual walking tour.